What's up, coffee drinkers? I'm Luke. Chad. And we are the Coffee Nerds. We'll try out a coffee, tell you what we think, and close with some awesome trivia. And today, we are trying orange coffee. All right, so this is, well, we tried two different methods here. I made my, I made my coffee by taking an orange putting it on top of the ground and pouring the hot water over it. And how did you make yours, Chad? I did a slice of orange and pulled, poured the coffee over the slice of orange. All right, here we go. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad, it's weird. It's not really. I don't know if mine's orangey, but it's definitely different. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't directly taste like orange, but it's, mm. it's still good. Yeah. It's kind of got like an initial, uh, I'd say an initial sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. And then like as you end it off, it's more bitter. Yeah, I can see that. I like it though. It adds a unique flavor to it. It does. It's almost like the orange is there in spirit. It's weird. <laughs> like it doesn't taste like orange, but it almost does at the same time. Yeah. It's almost like it's hard to describe. But it like, since I know the orange is there, I can tell it was there. But if you made it and didn't tell me it was orange, I don't know that I'd know that orange was what make, makes it different. But it's good. I'm gonna try that one again sometime, for sure. Yeah, I I enjoy it. It'd be interesting to try it with different coffees and see what it does with different uh, roasts and whatnot. Yeah. Try squeezing some orange into my coffee. Yeah, that's not the idea. All right, I squeezed some actual orange juice into my coffee. I'm gonna see how that does too. It's not very good. <laughs> All right, we ready for uh, trivia? Let's do it. All right, before I ruin my coffee with anything else. Actually, it's not too bad. Mm. All right. So on fe February, whoa. I'm going to try that again. On February 22nd, 1881, a stone obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle was re-erected in Central Park in New York City. Originally erected in Heliopolis in ancient Egypt, Cleopatra's Needle dates back to the 18th century pharaoh, I think that's Thutmose, Thutmose the third, Thutmose. Several hundred years later, the obelisk was moved to Alexandria and placed in the Caesarium, a temple built by Cleopatra to honor Mark Antony, or perhaps Julius Caesar. Reports are conflicted on who she was really into. Yeah, I was doing some research and like one page said she built it for Julius Caesar and another said Mark Antony. Uh, I had a hard time figuring out who it actually was, who it actually was built for. Uh, so the needle was eventually given to America as a gift for steering clear of political maneuvering as Britain and France tried to control the Egyptian government. Part of the pair, Cleopatra's needle has a twin that stands in London. Paris also received a monument, one taken from Luxor, which was part of a different pair of obelisks. One is still in Luxor, four obelisks in four different places, including three of the world's biggest cities. Sounds like the plot to a National Treasure or Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. I thought that was really cool when I found that. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. It's 
trying to figure out what we could cover. And uh, I, I saw Cleopatra's Needle is in New York. And I was like, what is that? So I had to do research on it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea there was a giant obelisk in the middle of Central Park. These things are big, too. Like, I think the one in Paris is 75 feet tall. Yeah, I can't I can't remember how tall the one in New York City is. That's pretty sweet. I'm sure it's probably flashing across the screen right now. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been Coffee Nerds. We'll uh, Wow. This has been Coffee Nerds. We will see you next week. Yes. Try some orange coffee. Yes. Let us know what you think. Coffee drinkers, it's your pal Coffee the Cup. Thanks for checking out this week's episode of Coffee Nerds. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks. Bye. I love you.